Welcome to another episode of the No Ceilings Podcast. I'm Tyler Metcalf, joined as always by Tyler Rucker. Rucker, how's it going? Metcalf, we're hanging in there. Um, you know, we're recording this on Thursday. 12 days. 12 glorious days. Almost 11 until uh, lottery time. And we can finally have ourselves a damn order. And I can stop looking at mock drafts that have ridiculous orders. I just... I, I We're so close. I need answers i need the truth so i'm hanging in there um just waiting just patiently waiting how are you doing sir how's the week going it, it is certainly going um you know bright side the weather is turning around uh 75 and sunny today absolutely gorgeous golf clubs are coming out this weekend i know yes. everyone loves golf talk to open up a podcast it's it's everyone's favorite thing um s- still just have this mop of hair on top of my head went to get a haircut earlier today uh, got there at the time it told me to get there, uh, sat there for an hour, and then, you know, the hairstylist decided to go have their lunch break, um, but didn't really say anything, and then my time jumped another hour, so I decided to leave. So, you know, good things all around, really exciting stuff. Um, God, just starting off the pod with golf and weather and haircut talk. I mean, Yeah, we just need some therapy, <laughs> it sounds like. I mean, I just at the point of the year where I'm like, okay. I'm either waiting for playoff games in the NBA to happen. So I'm just like counting down the hours and the seconds all day. Or I'm just like, I I need something in the drafts community to, to go. So now I'm just funneling myself into like talking about any prospect I possibly can, which presents problems sometimes. Um, and I'm, I it just, I need the lottery. I feel like once the lottery, it's this awkward part of the year where it's like, once the lottery is set, once the lottery happens, then we're, you know, all systems go. Yeah. It, Ready it, to it, rock. It, it gives us some certainty. It gives yes. fan bases um, an actual range of picks to get excited about um, and to get heartbroken about that they miss out on. So one of those guys that 29 fan bases are going to be heartbroken that they're not going to have a chance at is Victor Wembanyama, And he is going to be the first name that we dive into today we are going to kind of continue this dive into specific players and this week we're going abroad um and kind of running through i would say the four biggest international names Mm -hmm. um so we'll get to the other three but we have to start out with victor wambanyama we haven't talked about him in a while besides passing comments here and there um is he still number one for you yes Thanks for coming to the No Ceilings oh. podcast. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, for, we're going to do a lot of international prospects because it's funny how all of a sudden the international class is finally starting to heat up. Now everyone's been diving into their evaluations and had some time to catch up on film. And, you know, over the year at no ceilings NBA.com, I try to do those around the world pieces. Um, hoping next year we kind of take those to another level. But, um, I'm, I'm excited to hear your thoughts about all these guys. Cause I know me and you have both been catching up on our film and I feel like right now I'm like, okay, my eyes are burning through my skull. I think I've watched enough. I think I've got a good feel for everyone and then I'll start all over. So, um, I don't know. I, Victor is just been sensational throughout the year. I think this is me and you talked about in the beginning of the year. We were really excited for him to now have kind of like the playing time. Like mm-hmm. when he transferred over to the Metropolitan 92s. We were like, finally, let him let him run wild. Get as much playing time as you can. And we were, I think me and you in the beginning of the year, we're just like, stay healthy. Goal for the year. Dominate yep. and stay healthy. Check and check. So um, I'm, I'm excited to kind of talk about him now. We it's It's been one of those things where we put him off as much as possible. I know we're probably going to talk about him again because yep. we have, you know, almost 50 days until the draft. So shout out to the fan on Twitter that gave us a shout out for talking about Kobe Buffkin too much at no ceilings. It has also no, no such thing as too much Kobe Buffkin. No, no such thing. You also, know what? Let's, by let's the... pivot and talk about. <laughs> <laughs> also, by the way, I have a basketball bandits coming out on Kobe Buffkin soon. Um, so there you go. We have plenty of Kobe content, but 
let's focus on Victor. Yeah. So, Mr. Metcalf, you hit me with a text. Um, was it this week? Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. It was this week. Gosh. Woo. That shows you where I'm at mentally. Okay. <laughs> so, you hit me with a text. I mean, usually you hit me with a text and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited to read it. But when you sent me that text, I almost <laughs> did a triple take. I was like, whoa, I wasn't expecting this one this cycle. So talk to me about Victor. Help me help you. No, Okay, so just <laughs> I, I'm still all in. Um, yes, I'm, I'm not yes. relaying what the text was because I, that, I, that's just a whole bunch of Put it of up on the screen. No, I'm not doing it. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, 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 the gist of it is... It was a good text. It was the, like, I understand where you're going. I'm, I'm just asking questions. Yeah, but the, the gist of it was, is he getting overhyped? I, I You know, just to be clear, I, I don't necessarily think he is. I think aspects of his game are, um, but he's he's still incredible. He's still easily number one for me. He would be number one for me in ninety five percent of draft drafts. Um, I don't think he's the greatest prospect we've ever seen. Uh, for me, since I've been doing this, it's still Luca. Um, the way that he just commanded the entire game and organized everything um, was just otherworldly, especially for a kid his age. Um, so I, I thought he had a greater command and just mastery of the game um at this point in his career compared to victor that's not taking anything away from victor but um just for the record uh victor's set a seven four french center it sounds like there's a lot of rumblings that he might actually be seven five um and he was playing for the metropolitans this year where he um average has been averaging 21 and a half points 2.4 steals 10.1 rebounds 3.1 blocks uh, 2.5 turnovers uh, while shooting 47.5% from the floor, 29.8% from three, and 82.8% from the line. So let's talk about his offense first, and then we'll yeah. get into the nitty-gritty with the defense. Um, coming into the season, I think both me and you were, were I, at least more so me, I won't, I won't speak for you, but I, I was skeptical about what his offensive ceiling really was because we saw the flashes of the cool ball handling, the pull-up threes, the step-back stuff, but all of it was really soft. It was going away from the hoop. It wasn't dominant. And then we saw the G League showcase, and it was like, oh, this is someone completely different. And I think a lot of that is carried over throughout the season. Where are you at with his offensive game? Yeah, I was right there with you coming into the year. I think um, I had him at one. Um, I didn't feel, I didn't feel like this is the easiest thing I've ever done at one mm -hmm. before I watched him in person. And, and just be, I want to explain myself because people are going to hear this and be like, what are you guys talking about? I also have to back you up. The text you were talking about was a specific skill. So it wasn't, yes. you were overhyping him. You were overhyping a specific skill that we're going to talk about later. So everyone needs to don't try to attack Metcalf. Um, the offense going into the year, when we did the preview on him to start the season, I was very skeptical because it was a 7'4 guy that was floating on the perimeter. And all I said was, if you're going to have that size and that agility and those tools, I would like you to have a little bit of a mid-range, have you maybe some post-up game, finish around the basket. I thought they're all warranted good thoughts and i think me and you were spot on with that where i was like i need him to go to the post and show me some footwork i need him to have a little bit of a baby hook i need him to finish around the basket like you're seven four use your size don't yeah. don't just float out there and be a shooting guard and he's done that this year he's he's looked fantastic it was quickly when i saw him in person i was like yes big fella here we go now we're cooking and i still think you know gosh Victor does so many crazy things that all of us have been talking about all year. I mean, he's just a freak. That's why we call him an alien. He's like, he does some things on the court that are just special. It's the Jokic effect. I always like to call it the Jokic effect, where you watch a player a game and they do something so spectacular, you laugh every game. Jokic makes me laugh with one pass every game he throws. And it's sometimes it's just the idea of him throwing it or he tries it. And I'm like, how did he even try that? Victor does stuff where it's the... 
one footed three pointer, you know, blocking a shot to another, you know, country. Like he just is a freak. But I think there's still some offensive stuff in the mid range and the post up that I'm like, okay, I think it needs to be ironed out a little bit, but I think that's going to come with time. So I don't know. Sorry for the long answer. I'm just trying to get everybody on the right page. Where are you at, Metcalf? Um, I, I'm I'm really encouraged with the step that he took from last year to this year. Yeah. Obviously, the the massive leap in usage and opportunity and role um, plays a big factor into that. Um, and who knows if he would have had had a similar role? I doubt it if he hadn't switched teams. Um, but you know that switching teams and going down a little bit in competition, I think has done wonders for his game. Uh, a lot of what he's doing on offense kind of reminds me of what. Paulo was doing on offense um, pre Duke where it was clear how much better he was than everyone else. And he was just out there trying shit. And it's like, okay, these numbers suck. Like you don't really look like you're trying all that hard. Um, and th- I'm not trying to say Victor's not competing or whatever in this, but a lot of the shot attempts and stuff that he's out there doing, it's like you're experimenting and you're trying a lot of difficult stuff. And while the three point percentage is below 30%, you know, it's not ideal. I don't think he's a bad shooter by any means. I don't think he's not going to be a shooter in the long run. Um, but the biggest change from last year to this year for me was how much more towards the basket his offense is now, where there's more physicality to it, there's a more intent on getting to the rim. Last year, he has gorgeous post fadeaways. He had gorgeous three point fadeaways, some mid range fadeaways. The problem is everything was fading away. It was fading away from contact. It was avoiding contact. And that shows up with his 1.3 free throws, free throw attempts per game this year. That number's up to six. That's a massive leap. Obviously opportunity has a big role to play in that, but so does mindset. So does shot selection. So does craft and guile and a willingness to take on contact and, put yourself on the line that has been one of the biggest things that i've wanted to see that i was skeptical about him coming into the year that he's shown all season long is that he's not only able to take contact and get to the line and draw fouls consistently but that he's willing and eager to do that yeah and you know i I think i'm just trying to go big picture here because i don't want to forget to bring this up it's been it's been interesting this year with Victor because I don't know if a lot of people, if you haven't been following him closely before this year, like Victor had some injury problems consecutive years. He's got a history with injuries. So that's why at the beginning of the year we were like, please just stay healthy. Please play and stay healthy. I mean, he had 2020, he had a stress fracture in his fibula. I remember reading that and, and you know, Victor was still years away and I was like, oh no, is this going to be another like injury prone? Next year, he uh, fractured his finger, missed a month falling or, oh, next month he comes back, misses two months with a shoulder contusion. And then um, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to try to pronounce what this injury is because I'm going to butcher it. Everybody knows this, but it's basically was like a, a hip injury or a stabilizer of the hip. He missed an entire season um, or he was ruled out for the season. Let me put that the right way. So like he had injuries piling up each year. And I know some people are like, Oh, that's just a month. That's two months. Hey, it's still stuff with his frame. You have to pay attention to. So I just, I wanted to make sure to bring that up, but um, offensively uh, the growth he's had this year from what I watched in his film last year is unbelievable. I mean, he, I think you're spot on, Metcalf, when you're talking about that G League game was the the confidence just exploder. Like, it was just like, oh, all right. Like, I can do this. This guy, you know, going against Scoot, he's, Scoot had a great game, but Victor was like, I, I can do this. This is the number two projected guy. Like, I'm number one. Like, I'm putting on a show. And he had two of the best games he's probably ever had yeah. in front of an entire NBA front office and probably realized, like, I'm the number one pick. So... Um, after that, you just saw the confidence just cooking all year and, and he's looked fantastic. Let's talk about the shot. Mm-hmm. Um, well, on the surface, 29.8%, not what you want, um, from your seven, four guy, who's apparently a lethal shooter. Um, 
are you worried about the outside shot? Do you buy it? I'm buying it. Um, you know, if you go back and watch that clip that went viral of him, like going up against Rudy Gobert and like when they're just messing around or shooting around, it's like one-on-one the form already looks so much better now compared to then. And people don't realize like being that big and having that type of form and that stroke from outside is so hard. Yeah. Like, cause you know, we've all seen like pictures of him holding the basketball. It looks like, you know, a normal human trying to hold an apple. Like it's just ridiculous. So he's the fact that he can shoot like that from outside is, is ridiculous. I think one of the biggest things that, that I've been pl- pleased with throughout the year is he's had some really good stretches with his free throws. Um, I posted one on social throughout the year and, and people were like, what am I, what am I looking at? So his three point percentage has gone down. And I was like, does no one look and see that he's shooting hundred percent from the free throw line in his last like six games? Like, or I, I it might've been like five or four, but I was still like, that's a big deal. Yeah. That's something to take note of. I think in the beginning of the year, he was like 60% from the line and then, kept pushing that up. So I was like, that's good. Like he's going to get fouled a lot at the next level. Cause guys are going to be physical with them. So, um, I'm buying the shot. What about you? Yeah, I, I definitely do. Um, having the eight foot wingspan and having mechanics that consistent is really, really hard. There's so much room for error with how fucking long his, his arms are and how big his hands are. That's really hard to do. So, yeah, it's 30% right now. I, you know, I'm not saying he's going to be a 40 plus percent shooter, but I, I think above league average is more than reasonable. When you look at his touch, when you look at his shot attempts, uh, the volume, all of those indicators are exactly what you want to see from a young prospect who is growing as a shooter. You mentioned the free throw percentage, 83% that on the year on six attempts a game. That's, that's good volume uh, and really good, of good results. So I, th- I think all the indicators are leaning and trending in the right direction. Um, is he going to be Steph Curry out there? No. It's hard when your limbs are that freaking long, but I think his shot attempts are going to get easier in the NBA um, just because the uh, the wealth of um, opportunity, the variety and spacing. Um, if he's playing with a more polished point guard um you know I, I think there are a lot of factors that can go into him simplifying a lot of his shooting opportunities that then result in improved percentages down the line i think every indicator of his is exactly where you want it to be for this stage in his career i'm right there with you Com- completely agree i i mean it's going to be really interesting to see at the next level the balance when it comes to his game um, where he tries to lean on early. I would predict that he probably tries to float a little bit towards the perimeter offensively to Mm -hmm. get that cooking just because he's going to have to learn the ins and outs of using his frame, using his links. Now he's going to be a terrifying transition threat and lob threat and probably a lethal pick and pop guy. There's a lot of areas he's going to check out, but I'm just saying I I would like to see him also get some touches around the basket. A a head coach in the NBA is going to be like, Victor, get in the damn lane. Like, come on. Because all he has to do sometimes is do a drop step and dunk the ball. Like, he's bigger than everyone. So, it's just going to be interesting to see how he adjusts. And I'm sure Summer League, he's going to be freaking freak to watch. And it's going to be so awesome. I'm pumped out of my mind. So, um, I I got a question for you. Yeah. We haven't talked about this, but hey, we're having fun here. Do we think he's going to be a better playmaker at the next level? Because I feel like me and you talked about this. I still think there's some playmaking stuff that I feel like didn't really get unlocked. Unlocked. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like beginning of the year, I was like, I saw some flashes when he last year with his playmaking and vision. And I wonder if there is still a little bit of that to unlock especially with additional spacing yeah so my my only two gripes with his offense right now are his handle um which is understandable the dude's seven four with an eight foot wingspan like he's not going to have the tightest handle in the world and for how big he is it's really good so yeah he's gonna get the the ball stolen and it's gonna be loose at times i'm not really worried about it in the grand scheme of things 
the passing is the one area of his game that I felt he didn't really work on at all to improve this year. Um, I think there are like some of the flashes are incredible where he's, you know, out of the short roll, making the behind the back pass to a baseline cutter, um, you know, but there are a lot of opportunities where he's in the post and just completely misses a skip pass or completely ignores the guy to his right, you know, where he's just making the extra pass. Um, there were long stretches where it felt like he had blinders on or he just had absolutely no faith in his teammate. So it might've been that where it's like, no, I know you can't shoot for shit. I'm not passing you the ball. Um, or you just didn't see him. But there, there were a lot of instances I thought where it's like, that guy is wide open and you are not seeing him and given your scoring gravity guys should be, you should be finding these cutters left and right. You should be finding those weak side shooters consistently because you can literally see over and pass over everybody on the court. Why is this not a thing that, you know, and his, so his assist jump from 0.8 to 2.4, that's a good jump, but I think there is real potential for that to get to five, six, seven a game. Yes, I I think you're spot on with that. With like blinders and everything, I don't. I think the talent and the ability to do it is there. I just wonder if it was the the system, the team. I also think that it's something that can unlock another dimension to his game if he goes to a coach that will hold him accountable right away. Like, hey, you might be this hyped prospect. You might be the number one overall pick, but. We're in the NBA now. That guy's wide open. Throw the ball. Like, come. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, yeah. I, that's why I'm rooting for him to go to certain spots because I think, like, Spurs fans, I love you. Rockets fans, I love you. I, I'm excited if he goes to both of those coaches because Yudoka will get him to be another demon on defense. And Popovich will be the guy that's like, hey, Vic, pass the ball. Yeah. Like, guy's wide open. He's an NBA player. You, this is what you do now. Like, and I'm not trying to bash Victor. I'm just saying, like, there's another level of his game, I think, that mm -hmm. can be unlocked because he's shown those flashes and ability where it's also the anticipation out of the short roll, where it's like he's catching it and already wanting to pass it before it's even in his hands because he knows, like, that's wide open. And I'm like, that that tells me there's something there. That tells me you just need to trust it a little bit more. But, you know. He put up big numbers this year. I'm sure there was a emphasis he wanted to put up some big numbers to to turn some heads. And well, we'll see. What else you got? Hit yeah, me. absolutely. Um, let's talk about his defense, but first let's take a quick break. Okay, so Rucker, um the the thing that I, I texted you about, and, yes, you know, it, it, it was Spill about it. his defense. Um, I like you, it, and I'll, I'll uh, let me let me help you out here because I don't like I, I don't want people to attack Metcalf. Okay, I mean, you can. I'm I'm a big boy. I can take it. I know, but you know, got to help you out sometimes. Um, all you said was, "Is the defense overhyped?" and my first reaction was I wanted to be like, what's wrong with you? And then at first I, I like sat and I was like, I think I even said wrote back to you. I was like, what do you mean? And then, uh, cause I was more like in thought then I was like, Oh gosh, he might be onto something. And then I was like too tired and Metcalf's going to make my brain hurt. <laughs> so I was like, and then you, you had good points. I was like, I could see where you're going with this. And I think he's got the potential to be a terrifying defender, but yes. Yes. Go ahead. That's all I wanted to say. You were you were on the right path. Yeah, I mean, it was it. A lot of his defense feels like what we talk about with young uber athletic bigs all the time. Whereas, like they're good defenders, really, only because they're more they're bigger and more athletic than everyone. And I get the kind of same vibes with Victor's shot blocking and just a general defense right now. I'm not saying it's bad by any means. Um, I just see some stuff out there where it's like, this guy is an absolutely incredible defender. He's a world changing defender. Like he could be, but I think he's a long ways off from there right now. And I think his fundamentals, his intuition, um, his positioning, it's really sloppy a lot of the time right now. And it's getting better game by game. I just finished my, my game deep dive 
of him uh, his entire season. And it got better by the game, which is exactly what you want to see, especially from a young kid like that who has that much offensive responsibility. You want to see progression, and he showed progression. So, again, qualifier number 85 of the night on this. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it can't get better. I'm just saying there are, I think there are some real legitimate holes that need improvement for to for him to be a positive NBA defender. I think I even texted you. I said, I, and you know, this will be a hot take and people will be like, what the heck is Rucker talking about? And I love those moments, but I, I still think Chet Holmgren was a better defender. Yes. Than Victor. I will sleep beautifully at night knowing that. And it's not slander against Victor. It's, it's, I think Chet's one of the best big defenders I've seen. And it's just, I'm not saying that Victor can't become better, but Chet is more seasoned, more polished. And it's not just his shot blocking. It is the reading the defense. Like it's just the floor awareness on the defense side of the ball. Victor or Chet just always was just all over the place. And I was just like, he's playing a move ahead. I think Victor makes up for a lot of maybe some footwork or some, you know, fluidity. He makes up for it with his length. It's yeah. going to be that way. And and that's also like just tells you how special Victor is a, as a defensive player because he can make up for that mistakes. If someone blows by him, Victor has the quickness and fluidity to catch up to someone. But I think that's where Chet, to me personally, I don't know how, where you're at, is Chet puts himself like is a step ahead when it comes to that position. He doesn't have to catch up and he can catch up. I don't know. I'm getting off trot, but I know that's going to be something that kind of get like people are like, what? But I'm like, Hey, no, like I still believe that. And Victor has the tools to be a yeah terrifying defensive, but, but um, I understand what you're saying because there is rawness. There is stuff where I'm like, okay, it's nice that you're seven four with an eight foot wingspan. I get it, but what what else sticks out to you when you're when you're talking about it? Do yeah, you think so it's I, all fixable, or do you think it's just yeah. raw? Or yeah, yeah. I mean, so my biggest issue with his with this defense right now is that he doesn't really maximize his length. He plays like someone who's six nine with a seven four wingspan. Um, and what, what I mean by that is on the perimeter, he gets way too into guys. It's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. bro, like you can be under the free throw line with a hand up and you're getting a strong contest on a pull up three. Like you don't need to be out on the arc, you know, trying to move your feet with this guy. That's not the best way to defend him. Um, on top of that, he defends a lot with his hands down and a lot of his shot blocks around the rim on the perimeter. He gets a lot of them because he's long as shit. Um, and, you know, his reaction speed is pretty good, but it those arms and those hands have so long to go where it's like, just, just start the possession out with that hand up. Not only is, do you have a better chance of blocking it, but you get a six, three point guard looking up at that. And it's like, I, I don't want to shoot over that. Like I can't get my shot off over that. It's over the rim to begin with. So that is my biggest thing with him right now where it's, and that's something that I think is really fixable and just comes with time because it's someone who doesn't feel like he knows the limitations to his body right now. And it's like, Oh, I have all of this and I don't need to be up in you. I can be back here and be even more effective. I, the perimeter thing is actually one of my favorite things you brought up because it, it is spot on. It's one thing that drives me crazy about him. I think it's very fixable. Everything yeah. you just said is very fixable. It's just a good film sesh with an NBA coach and be like, no, yeah. you know, or literally someone blows the whistle and be like, what are you doing? Like <laughs> get back, scoot back. Um, because he, he does get right up in people and NBA guys will get him a whistle very fast. Like that won't be flying. Um, the hands down would just drive me insane. So that's got to get ironed out. But I, I think both of those will. So, I mean, we're talking about something that we think is yes. fixable. Um, and if it is fixable, that's a very fun step. Because the hands always drive me crazy when you have that length because you don't realize how much damage you could do just having your hands up. It takes it's away like passing shooting lanes. Yes, angles, passing lanes, you tip. Yes. yes, so 
shooting, people get freaked out, you know, just use it. Don't be a waste of space. Use the space you have. So that's, that's all I got. I, I like that. You call that out though. That's yeah. Good. Well, and then just the other two things, um, they oh, kind of gosh, stem off the of that. Checklist. Oh yeah. Here we oh, go. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Beck, um, yeah. Okay. Here we go. No, I, I, everything else just kind of really stems off of that though, because he just gets too sucked into the ball and he gets a little jumpy on ball where it's kind of easy to get him off his feet. And obviously the eight foot wingspan helps him iron out a lot of those issues. So it's not a big thing, but NBA ball handlers are going to be crafty. They're going to get him in foul trouble real quick with that kind of stuff. Um, he also has this tendency where I, I think Tret, Tret Holmgren was the best prospect I've ever seen do this, where he was thrilled when guys would dr- blow past him on a drive because he would use his angles so well where he would bump them out an extra foot. He would make them take the, a little more rounded path. He would let them blow by him. Then he would be on their hip and slot everything from behind or just, you know, stay connected and let them dribble all the way through and out. Victor, it's like he wants to be a wing defender and move his feet and cut guys off from the drive completely. And he just turns his hips and gets parallel with the baseline all the time. And you see these six foot two point guards put their shoulder or forearm into his hip and just shrug them off and get these uncontested pull up 15 footers because his momentum and his hips are taking him completely away from where the ball is. Obviously sometimes he's able to, you know, re- reposition himself, regain his balance and get a strong contestant because he's massive. But again, when we scale it up to NBA ball handlers and on-ball creators, that becomes a lot less realistic. And it all comes from this tendency and desire for him to, for some reason, get way too into the ball instead of just sagging back, let those guys take the space, even let them beat him off the dribble and then block the shot from behind they you do that twice and next time they do it they're dribbling all the way through because they don't want to get blocked for the third time in a row and i don't want everyone to think like well why are you guys just comparing chet and victor and it's like because they're the potential last two top two picks they're very they similar archetypes they're very similar same bodies. physical profiles and in and, and if you want to say it in some way like there's an obvious reason why we're comparing them um and it's good to to talk about that because it's it's also going to be fresh in your mind. Like everyone's going to be remembering Chet, and you're going to be like, okay. So I don't want it, everyone to be like, oh, why are you guys just focused on that? It's like because it's obvious. But I think there's a lot of stuff that he's going to iron out. Um, I think he's going to have. I I wouldn't be shocked if he's got a little bit of a learning curve that everyone's going to be a little surprised of. I I, I would be more surprised he comes in and is just dropping thirty in the regular season. I think he's going to have some growing pains and just getting used to everything. And every rookie should, and we shouldn't overreact, but we always do this. It's fine. But, um, I think he'll be fine. I think, and it won't shock. I could see him going to summer league kicking ass. And then I could see him going to the regular season. Maybe it's a little bit of a rough patch and then really cooking as he gets the hang of everything. But, um, from what I saw in person pregame, he looks like he's going to be a relentless worker Yes, and has great intangibles and checks all the boxes. So everything we're talking about right now, I'm sure he's going to get, you know, figured out and work on it. And my goodness, if he does, I'm going to keep trying to find weaknesses because I <laughs> do think he's from another galaxy. Yeah. You got anything else? It, no, just like, and when I call those weaknesses, it's like, a B minus grade or B grade instead of an A plus. And none of them are unfixable. Like, I don't think there's any real, I think he moves his feet. Well, I think the effort is really good. It's just an understanding of how much space he can afford because of how quickly he can close it. So he's incredible. I'm nitpicking, but someone's defense who I have absolutely zero concerns about is James Najee um, from FC Barcelona. I just I, I love this out of you. Wow. So you 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 were in. Oh you're, yeah. you're in. Oh yeah. Where you got him? Um sorry, scrolling to the 40. I'm kidding. Um I have him at 25. Good. Good. Um I love him. I I I think I'm gonna do another little bit of a deep dive to refresh because I'm in a tough spot with my big board. 
I love my lottery. Love it, Metcalf. And I don't know if I, I'm really struggling to move anyone. I'm looking at it and I'm like, I don't really know. And then I get outside of the lottery and I'm like, maybe, but I'm pretty comfortable with like 15 to 20 right now. And then I had Najee at 30 before and I'm like, okay, I need to move him up. And I'm like, who am I moving down? So I love Najee. Um, I've mentioned this on... I think I mentioned this on a podcast or maybe I haven't. So everyone listening, here you go. Here's your little breadcrumbs. Um, I talked to an exec and I said that he's like, where do you got Najee? And I said, I, I got him at 30 right now. I want to move him up. And he said, I think he goes much earlier than that. So there you go. Um, and I think he was telling, I kind of was like, we're 2025. He's like, yeah, I could see him in that range for sure. And it goes to point out this. Do not obsess with stats when you're talking about international guys. Um, I wrote about this in my article for around the world at noceilingsnba.com. Go check it out. It's free. And I talked about how unbelievable that FC Barcelona roster is. Um, they've got guys that have won Spanish league MVPs. They've got guys that have won Euro league MVPs. I mean, they're like nine deep. And the fact that Najee's even getting nine minutes a game is unreal. When you look at that roster. Corey Higgins is on that roster, godson of Michael Jordan. I don't know if you've heard of him. My point, Najee, raw ball clay, scary tools. I love the defense. I'm so proud that you love the defense. Now I'm back. I needed this episode to get me back, Metcalf. So talk to me. What do you love about it? Um, well, I mean, the fact that he's seven feet tall and 250 pounds and turns 19 in the middle of August, um, those are all really good things uh one of the youngest guys in the draft um another breadcrumb don't mean to interrupt you his agent told me he's six eleven without shoes so yeah we're gonna say he's seven foot so there you go you're right on yeah well we don't play barefoot so no exactly um, the he's just like seven feet 250 that is a massive human being he doesn't move like it if you if no. you just watched him move obviously you'd be like god that dude's huge because he's built like a bodybuilder um but he moves like a wing he's light on his feet he's quick off the ground he's strong he absorbs contact he's physical he boxes out he i i love his drop defense it's so much more advanced than it should be for someone his age and how raw he still is i i think his defensive upside is terrifying um i'm gonna inevitably compare him to a dembona uh quite a bit during this episode just because they're such similar players um, I think Bono is a little more versatile with his ability to get out on the perimeter and defend a little more um, reliably. But I, I think Najee's um, drop coverage and ability to really control the paint is a step ahead. I, I think it's really impressive. And I think he might, I know I've said this about Bono, but I think he might be the best interior defender in this class. Off the top of my head, Bona two years older? Uh, yes. I think he's 20 right now. I think he's 20 turning 21. I'm trying to be smart. Um, he is currently 20. Yeah. He's currently 20. Um, I think he just turned 20. Uh, yeah. March 28th. So just turned 20. Bona plays like he's two years older. And what I mean by that is Bona plays more confident with everything he's doing. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like he's he, he's more confident in going 100 miles an hour. I think Najee is still at that. Like he's confident defensively. He looks very confident with what he's doing, and um, he looks like things are slowing down on defense. Offensively, he looks 18. Uh, he looks like an 18 year old big man that wants to finish everything with power and get every rebound. And you almost need to bring the reins back. And every single thing, you know, we always say this in evaluating. We always, I've heard coaches say this. I'd rather bring the reins back. I don't want to push someone to work harder. I'd rather tell them, hey, calm down a little bit. And I think Najee offensively, I mean, we'll, we'll get to that later. So defensively, right there with you. Every time I watch him, drooling, in love. That same exec I talked to in the beginning of the year, I wrote my article, I mentioned it, said if he was going to Texas, absolute lock for the first round that was be beginning of the year like yeah. i think maybe three games in he, he's like i'm telling you if he was going to texas mortal lock to go in the first round 
And I talked to him at the end of the year. He's just like, I think he's going earlier than where you have him. And I was like, son of a gun, because I'm moving him up. And so I'm glad I, man, am I glad I called that guy. <laughs> I could pull it out of Billy Madison. Um, defensively, I feel like he's a 25 year old that's been playing in the NBA for four years. You know, like it's just like you said, Metcalf, there's some stuff he does that is just way ahead of his age. So you pair that with the fact that he's been going up against one of the best powerhouse teams in the world all year in practice every day. Like it wouldn't shock me if he's one of those names on draft night. That's like, Whoa, like just go. Cause I don't think you find those raw tools with that frame and, and you're spot on. He's about seven foot two fifty. He moves like he's six seven two ten, like athletic dunker. Like he just glides around the court. It's unbelievable. So sorry, I'm yeah. very excited. I'm very no, excited you, to be here. you rightfully so. Um, I, I I really don't think there's much to complain about with the defense. I'm just like just looking at my notes. The only things I have down were you know little too hesitant to step and drop coverage where you know ball handler got a little too deep part of that's on him and eventually he needs, needs to step part of that's on the on ball defender for never getting back rim side it's but like all the notes that i the negatives that i have on his defense are oh yeah wait he's 18 oh it's like oh yeah he just turned 18 he's a teenager he's super young he's super raw and he's playing in one of the best leagues in the world on one of the best teams in the world so it's like two years from now do i think they're really going to be glaring concerns with his defense and i'm not sure there's going to be any concerns with his defense for you know the lone times where whoever the elite on ball ball handler is that drags him out to 30 feet but he has the athleticism where i really don't think it's going to be some massive mismatch like it is with 95 percent of centers do you have anyone that pro comp wise oh god um, I know, but I, and let's let's put a disclaimer out here. I, I think we need to make, you know, we need to put a a bill out there. We're gonna we're gonna write a bill. <laughs> I think pro comps are not like I, I see them completely different. A pro comp for me, and I said this with my guy Trevor, who I did a podcast with, and I'm I'm really pumped to listen to that because he had a great. He had a great breakdown of it. And I was like, you might've just cleared my head for the last five years. And he was just like, it's always who reminds me of. He's like, I know like KOC does shades of, he's like, whenever I say pro comp, it reminds me of. And I said, that's exactly where I'm always at the pro comps. I'm like, no, he reminds me of, I'm not saying he's going to be this guy. Like Jairus Walker reminds me of Draymond with how he plays and how he can impact the game. I'm not saying he's a lock to be Draymond green hall of famer as a prospect like calm down so i'm trying to there i feel better now i basically went to therapy shout out trevor i appreciate that so i'm trying to figure out like who does Najee remind you of i feel like i get some capella vibes but i'm also like he's i more, he moves way better yes I, he's more mobile than capella so i i, I think his teammate on okongwu um a lot of those vibes he's a little bigger than Okongwu. Um, he might move better than Okongwu. Like, I, I, I get some Nick Claxton vibes, like a buff Nick Claxton. Ooh, um, buff Nick Claxton, that's good. <laughs> a bodybuilding Nick Claxton <laughs> is a fun one. Um, and yeah, I, I think there's some there's some Robert Williams stuff there. I've said that with Bona too, but I, I think there's really some. I think that's the upside. He does have some. If Robert Williams wasn't as bouncy and was bulk looked like the Hulk. Like Najee just that frame's absurd because it looks like it's just no fat. It looks like he's, you know, yeah, an Olympic lifter in the off season. So the fact that he's 18, I I, I still don't need a birth certificate. That'd be funny if it's the first NBA combine ever where they're like, Can we just get the birth certificate? We don't need <laughs> you to show up. Um, okay, let let's talk about the offense. Um I'm excited to hear your notes because there's a lot of stuff that where I was hinting at um it's the opposite of the defense for me. Yeah, basically. How bad is it for you? Um, is it youth or is it? No, clearing? It's, more, it's more than that. Okay. Um, uh, oh gosh, here we go. <laughs> I love, I love it. Would you roughhouse? I don't think he has any touch, which is my biggest concern where 
the yeah, free throws the free throws are really bad um some of his like post hook stuff is like he's just baseball throwing it against the glass um that's my biggest uh, rim running offensive rebounding the kind of cutting and du- ducking in finishing with power zero concerns on that it's everything that he can't dunk um and that is where i'm like oof that that that's that's the only reason i can't put him ahead of bona and i have them back to back um i'm just a little more encouraged by bona's offense right now and yes i know there's that year and a half age gap but i think there are there are more issues and concerns that a year and a half doesn't necessarily make up speaking of bona i was just watching some of his film and there's more offensive stuff than I was. He has some really nice, for. like face up, rip through stuff. There's some more stuff that I was like, the dem yeah. might be going on, moving on up. <laughs> um, Najee's offense is not pretty. No, there is some baby hooks where he throws a line drive, which is pretty hard to do. Yep, and some that he banks in that I'm like, oh my gosh, please check the backboard for a crack. <laughs> um. But I'm optimistic. I'm actually encouraged because there's a lot of areas that he's a pretty big factor in um, already that I think could have a really nice NBA transition despite his youth. But like if I was a NBA organization and we drafted Najee, my dream is like, he's not gonna, but my dream would be like he goes to the Celtics and they'd say, hey, you're Robert Williams backup, Al Horford, take care of him, teach him your ways. And literally Najee's just a rotation big and they're like, for two years, you're going to sit in the lane and just shoot baby hooks every single practice. Like he, he just needs some polish offensively and it's going to come with time. But like if, you know, I say Clint Capella earlier because Capella's turned into this shot blocking rebounding maniac that's a lob threat that got paid mm-hmm. by setting good screens and rebounding and protecting the basket in Houston with D'Antoni and James Harden like there's articles they're basically like do all this we're going to get you paid he did it so like i think Najee could have success early on as that offensive game grows he's never going to be a guy you give the ball in the post and you're like go to work he's never going to be Nikola Jokic but if Najee is a freak of nature lob threat with really terrifying power. If he gets an offensive rebound and you do not get him like right away, he will dunk all over anyone. Yes. And you know, he has some creativity like finishing. It's just, there's no touch, like the free throws, no touch. Yeah. Um, And then like, if he has to post up, there's not a lot of touch, but it's also weird because I think his his uh, his brain will be going faster than his body sometimes. And then sometimes it works and you like, well, where did that footwork come from? So, I mean, like, that's where I'm like, okay, maybe there's something here and he just needs some time. It just takes time. Where, what else? Um, yeah, I, I, I think that's really it. I mean, that, that, that point that you made about like there's some creativity like out of the short row all of that feels like it's just a symptom of him just being this freak athlete yeah and it's like oh defender let me just avoid them somehow and he somehow gets around them and then botches a layup or something but it would be nice to see a pass out of the short roll yeah once um but i think he's a very real vertical spacer and a elite defender and for the first four years of his nba career that's going to be enough. Um, DeAndre Jordan? Yeah, yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, and another guy that got paid a lot. But I'm saying, like, you put him around four other guys, and you're just like, hey, be be the incredible Hulk in the paint and block shots, rebound, get it out, finish lobs. Makes sense to me. I don't know. I'm just... I could see a lot of teams being like, this will be a fun wrinkle to have. This be a fun thing to develop because you really could find gold with James Najee if you go. I, I could see a playoff team going up to try to get him at the, like mm-hmm. the end of the first. Like I could see some be someone being aggressive. He makes a lot of sense for Memphis. 
A lot of it, sense. A lot of sense for Indiana. A lot of sense for Indiana and Memphis. And every Pacers fan would be like, oh, he's a stash. I don't think you're stashing him. No. I think you are getting him into your organization and working with him right away. Because I, I think he's... I think I even got a good, I think I even got a, oh, really good intel. So I was like, oh, great. This is fun. But sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, well, someone else who probably won't be a stash is uh, Bilal Kulabali, Victor Wembanyama's teammate. But first, let's take our last ad break. Yeah. Okay. So, Rucker. I was behind on the Kulubali film. I'm caught up. I'm intrigued. Where are you at? No, no, no. I don't I don't want to do this. I, I need I'm really excited to hear what you think. So you you're you're caught up. Um yes. Okay, so we're gonna switch it up. I'm gonna pull Hannibal Lecter. Now I'm the interviewer. Okay. Um where are we at? Give me a number. Give uh me a 20, number. 26. That's a good range, and everyone that's really die hard on the Koulibaly train right now, you're going to be like, what in the world? Oh, my gosh. I'm really scared to actually look this up. But tell me why. Is the lottery too rich for you? Yes. Oh, my gosh. But, like, I I, I have him, I I have be... him at 26. Oh, my God. <laughs> I swear I have him at 26. I, I, need, have I him... need a new computer because I have him have at 26. <laughs> I'm looking right at it. I have him at 26. So I love him. Yeah. So, so same. And I am shocked. There's this much love going around right yeah. now. Um, and I really, really, really like him, but I'm shocked at how quickly the fire got a gasoline tanker to get out a fire hose and spray gas on an open flame. Cause it is scorching right now. Um, I've given some of our guys at no ceilings crap about it. I love that they're aggressive about yeah. it. I, I understand why you could fall in love with it. Yeah. And I'm going to give everyone crap this time of the year because I'm ready to rock. But talk to me why you're not buying in more and where you, why you have them at 26. Yeah. So and I, I just looking at my board, like I could see him as high as like 19, mm-hmm. but 26 feels, I feel better about it. And, you know, it always comes down to fit, yada, yada, yada. Right, right, first. right. Um, so do, do you want the positive or the negative first? Let's start. Uh, I'm feeling a little bit of a, like a jerk tonight. Let's start okay. negative. Let's have fun here. I don't know on a good is, note. I don't know what he is on offense. I don't either. Um, Other than I, an I athletic think, wing with size. Yes. I think there are encouraging signs. I think mm-hmm. he's actually a really good cutter and offensive mm-hmm. rebounder. Um, I think he takes advantage of when the def- when his defender turns his back. I think he takes advantage of that pretty consistently, which is awesome. Um, even the spot of jumper, I like. I think he has decent touch. I think the mechanics are consistent, but it's super slow. And he is an incredibly reluctant shooter. Like he has to be wide open to let it fly. Um, the bigger concern is I can't remember him creating anything on ball, whether it was a shot, um, an assist. I think his passing is super inconsistent. Uh, there was, you know, off the top of my head, there was one pick and roll possession with Wembenyama. Um, that was really nice where he led, you know, he kind of split the defense and led Wemby right to the rim um, for an easy score. That was great. There are about a dozen turnovers that I can remember um, that are brutal. Uh, I don't think he's that good of a ball handler. He's awesome in transition uh, where he can really maximize that athleticism. There's some straight line drive stuff, but other than cutting and the absolutely wide open spot up threes, I, I don't know what he is on offense yet. And I'm not creative enough to really envision how quickly his ball handling and kind of creation abilities how quickly those can progress to see if he can become more than he currently is. I agree. I very much agree with all this. Um, Now, everyone that's a diehard cool ball, a fan, come on back. It's going to get, it's going to get more (laughs) positive. I promise you. Um, And we're not the only ones that think this. I 
talked to another exec that I was like, Hey, what, what do you think about cool by? He's like, I like him a lot. And then I just cut to the chase. I was like, would you pick repair or cool ball there right now? And he's like, Oh gosh, that's a tough one. I was like, right now. And he goes, Oh, I would pick repair if I had to right now, which I was shocked. I was like, Whoa. And he goes, I like cool ball a lot. He has a ton of stuff. He's way behind. He's like, he is way behind where repair is. I was like, what? And, and this is someone I very much trust. And he's like, no, cool. he's like, cool ball. He's got a ways to go. He said, if you get him as a developmental guy, you could potentially find something. Cause he's got really good tools, but this is where we need to get to an important realization with everyone. Cool ball. I put up uh, 21.8 points per game in the lower level. You watch that film. I put, go check out the finals videos. You're going to be able to tell the difference of when Koulibaly is cooking against lower level competition. He looks like he's a NBA all star in that level because he's everything's a drive. He's Euro stepping for dunks. He's tip dunking everything. He looks just relentless attacking the basket. Um, I, I had a sequence where he had the same play three times in a row. Not like he had the three consecutive sequences where they ran it. It was basically like a, I think it was a pick and roll at the top of the key coming to the right, or it might've been a dribble handoff or something, but he did three different results. Like one was a tough finish at the basket. One was a step back. And anyways, I'll find the clip, whatever. But you go to the higher level, he averaged four points a game. You know, in 16 minutes, yeah, he shot 55% from the field, but it was on 2.9 field goal attempts a game, 42% from three on 0.8 three-point attempts per game, and 56% from the line. I think Cool Bali has the tools to be a heck of a steal mm -hmm. in this draft. Yes. But I think he's going to be... You're going to have to do some some patience, some development, get him in the summer league, get some confidence going, maybe even the G League. I think it's going to take some time. And I'm not trying, like, I understand why some people are mocking him in the mock or in the lottery. Yeah. Because at late lottery, you're trying to find a golden ticket. So I understand that yes. idea. But that's where, like, if Utah took him with their second pick, I get that. That makes sense to me because you're like, Hey, we, maybe we got the guy we wanted with the first pick. Let's have a little fun with the second one. So not trying to downplay cool ball, eight, but there's a lot of stuff that I'm like, this has got some work to do now. I think he has gifts that can really, really make that a fun process. So sorry. So no, that out I, and, and j j just for the record, the, the games that I have gone through the 20 or so, have been at that higher level. So yeah. when I say that I've seen him in these lesser roles and I don't know what he can be, it's because that's all I've seen him do. So I, I will go back and I promise I'll, 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 I'll revisit some of the lower level stuff where the usage is a little more diverse, but I'm just looking at his synergy numbers in these games where in the upper level, 78.3% of his possessions came in transition, spot up cuts or offensive rebounds that's valuable stuff. And I, I'm glad that he's good at it. But when we're talking lottery, I, I want a guy who can get a shot off when he's not left completely unattended. And I just, I'm not saying he'll never get there. I'm just saying right now, based on the ball handling, the decision-making, the passing and creation vision and um, opportunities that he's shown, I think that's a really steep hill for him to climb. There's, <sighs> There's stuff at the lower level. I'll make sure you go back and see it. Um, he shows that he has. It's it's a it's a sophomore in high school that is dominating JV that gets called up to varsity and he doesn't have that confidence to be the guy. But every time he goes down, he's oh, I'm the guy. I just got called up to varsity, and I'm making way too many high school jokes with <laughs> basketball competition in the last couple of pods. So I'll cut that out. But it's uh, it, it almost looks like Jalen Brown is rookie year with the Celtics and Jalen Brown last night, like just the difference of confidence level. And that's going to take some time and might take yeah. some G league time, but you could see a different player when obviously it's, he has the freedom and the, the 
composure to to try stuff out. I think there's wiggle room. I think there's some stuff in his game. Like we'll get positive now. His footwork, um, I guess you didn't see much, but lower level, he'll ha- he'll have some euros that I'm like, oh my gosh, like just yeah, and the, he showed that yes. off in transition too, where he would yes plant and then really extend his stride over and avoid yes. the charge and and you know finish around contact or draw the foul or something. It was like oh, okay, like the athleticism I think is evident. It's like holy yes. fuck, this dude is an athlete, and and he's reportedly six eight now. According yeah. to Jonathan and Gavoni, which is probably two inches taller than we were expecting. Um, I think seven three wingspan, maybe you mentioned or something, but uh, um, seven two or seven three. Yeah, seven like two that. or seven three. So a, a good, a very good wingspan. Checking a lot of boxes. Um, and that's gonna get the intrigue of a lot of scouts. And he's been on the radar all year. He has been because of Victor. Like it, you know, people were buzzing about him earlier. Now it's just turned up to another level. Um and I think it's more with the draft community because everyone, you know, highlights are fun. This is the time of the year where people try to get caught up as fast as they can. They watch a lot of highlights and cool Bali's highlights are very fun when you're watching the highlights, but I still think there, there's just some maturity and I'm not trying, we're not dogging them. I'm just saying, yeah, I have him at 26. I just said I could see him going lottery mm-hmm. just because I'm, I got 20 at six. It's just saying like, I think there's, you can unlock Pandora's box when it comes to his game. I'm just, just throwing that out there, but you got anything else? Uh, yeah. The defense. Um, what do you think? I Tell think me. he could be the best defense wing defender in this class. There he is. The, 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 the night in shining armor. We were waiting for that one. What do you love so much about his defense? Cause I will say, I told you in Portland, I was watching, um, I went back to watch scoot versus Victor and I caught myself going, Oh gosh, that's cool. Bale. And they, <laughs> I watched him for like defense, like a couple possessions in a row. And I was like, Oh my gosh. So there you go. Um, the footwork's insane. Just effortless mover, incredible screen navigation, uh, both on ball off ball. Um, even when he gets bumped off his spot by a screen, he gets back rim side pretty consistently. And even if he doesn't, he has the length to get a good contestant or force like a, a off balance leaner. Um, I, I think there's like really, really scary upside with his defense. I'm right there with you. Um, I, I I think the defensive stuff is is what he's going to need to lean on early. So yeah. I think he could be one of those guys where you're like we're playing him early um, to install some confidence. Kind of what Portland did with Shane Sharp this year, but. I think you got to be strategic with building up that confidence and maybe you get him some run in the G league. I hate when people think that's a negative thing. I'm just saying like, get him some reps. He needs to play. Yeah. He needs to put some weight on. Um, And it's in the shot is where it bugs me. And I think this will also help him defensively because he has the quickness that I think he could put on some good weight. Um, He's, he's an extremely skinny version of it but he almost gives me right now like shimmy ojale vibes with just like how he plays and like the outside shot is like mm. he's got to be wide open to feel confident to shoot but like also sometimes on his shot and i'm nowhere talking about the defense but i noticed the shot he brings the ball low and i think that's maybe trying to make up for a lack of upper body strength so and, and just like the the whole process with the shot is just really slow. Um, and I, I I'm unfamiliar with if he's had recently done like a huge mechanical overhaul and he's just really focused on keeping that consistent and making sure the form is what it should be. And in time it speeds up. Um, if so, then awesome. Good. Yeah. I, I don't really have any glaring issues with the form besides, like you mentioned a couple of little things and then the speed of it. Um, but before we move on, America's favorite game, this or that. Um, I knew it. And I'm having theme music. <laughs> I've got, I've made theme music and I didn't get it uploaded. So next episode, we'll have it ready to rock. Uh, Colby Jones or Koulibaly? Colby Jones. Uh, Max Lewis or Koulibaly? Max Lewis. Sensaba or Koulibaly? Sensaba. Strother or Koulibaly? Koulibaly. Um, Whitehead or Koulibaly? <clears throat> That's probably my debate right now. 
because I'm looking at it. Um, I'm going to go uh, Whitehead. I still, I can't, can't stop loving you. Can't stop loving you. Um, Julian Phillips or Koulibaly? Koulibaly. S- somewhat related question. Um, if Koulibaly was on Tennessee this year, does he look any different than Julian Phillips? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah. No, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, because he uh, the shot might be a little. I don't know. What do you think? That one's a good one. I don't think there would be a whole lot of difference. So then, I have Koulibaly over Phillips, but okay. Um, um last one. Koulibaly or Ray and Repair. Repair. Okay. Yeah. Um, Bring what? me the heat. Let's I got one for you. Cool, cool Bale or City Sissoko? Uh, cool Bale. I need to catch up on some Ignite film, so that that could change. Uh, but right now, oh gosh, Bale. I'm gonna get a text from you about City. Woo, baby. Woo, baby. Love me some City when the lights go down in the city. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly moving on from that. Um, I, I'm gonna make a music video <laughs> with it. I don't care. Okay. Let's get into the last guy, uh, Ryan Rupert, French wing playing for the New Zealand Breakers this year. Um, are you are you still as high on him as you once were? Um, I've, I've, I'm a little lower. I still got him at I got him at 21 right now. Oh, okay. Talk to me. Yes, How come? Sir. I uh, I think there's scary defensive stuff. Um, I also think there's offensive flashes that I'm really, really excited about now a little bit of a frustrating one just because of the numbers, the production, the minutes. But I think this is going to be one of those guys where like the flashes have got me on the edge of my seat and I can't, I can't get over his defensive stuff. I, I just, he's one of those guys I get cool on. I cool off on. And then every time I go back and throw on the tape, I'm just mesmerized by his feet and how active he is away from the ball, how alert he is, and just how lengthy he is. And I think the shots improved a lot from FIBA. I I just really do think this is a guy that with a couple of years with an NBA team is really going to be something scary. Like – I it's funny a, a lot of guys on youtube a lot of fans i love you guys but a lot of the videos the very common pro that is compared to a lot of these prospects is michael bridges and i'm just like okay i guess this is the guy this year that everyone's comparing to is michael bridges michael bridges i forget it was repair it's like three other guys and i was just like my goodness okay michael's the guy this year huh um defensively i could see repair being that offensively we got to realize how <laughs> nice Michael Bridges was coming out of Nova. So, um, but I really like repairs raw tools. Um, I just, I think that's going to be a guy that you get him in. He's going to be a defensive specialist early. And then I could see like year three, you're just like, gosh, repairs game came together beautifully. And, that's just a really nice piece. So I, I just, I'm believing. I'm, I'm really am believing in it. I'm shocked you're not a bigger buyer. But I think you're just probably going off of now, not future. I like to think, I like to think of every prospect as I give them three years. Yeah. Before you reevaluate. That's what I've always yeah. been taught. That's yeah, what I've absolutely. been said by execs. Like I, they've always told me that like three years, reevaluate. No, I don't read your draft after one year. Get that out of here. <laughs> so I, I'm I'm looking at repair of what do I think he is at his second contract? What do I think he is? And I think there's a just steady increase with his game where it could be like each year another area of his game starts to blossom. So um, sorry, I'm rambling a lot. No, tonight. you're good because I I I'm I'm lower on repair. Um I think the defense is good i'm not quite to the levels that you're seeing um okay. i i think he can get a little spastic and a little he, he can kind of get like happy feet mm-hmm. um 
And, you know, I, I don't know if that's a symptom of, you know, I, I, who knows, whatever. Um, maybe it's correctable. I'm not entirely sure, but it feels like it can be really easy to send him one direction and then go the other. Um, the length, the effort, the work rate, all that kind of stuff, the the footwork 90% of the time on ball defense, I think it's really good. It's stuff exactly what you want to see from a young, athletic, lengthy wing defender. It's stuff that I'm assuming makes most NBA coaches really excited to work with because that's someone that you can throw out on a point on, you know, a primary ball handler and be like, Hey, just go annoy the shit out of him for the next five minutes. Um, and then we'll give you a breather and then we'll do it all over again. Um, I thought some of his off ball stuff was a little weaker. Um, that, I, it may may have been a team thing, may have been a teammate thing, but it seems like they screwed up switches all the time. Again, maybe his language barrier thing too. I'm not quite sure how good his English is or how good his teammates' French is. You know, I so. But just from the tape, it seemed like they were screwing up switches or getting caught on screens a lot. Um, so maybe that's a him communication thing. Maybe it's team scheme and overall confusion um but i i thought the defense was good but and it may have been a thing of expectations being too high going into it where all i've heard about it was he's the best defender in this class he's the best wing defender in this class he's a, an elite defender and i didn't quite see that so kind of similar to what i was talking about with victor's defense it's good there's a lot i like but it's far from perfect for me yeah and I think Rupert is a guy that if he puts on some good weight, I could even see that length being more of a problem, but it's also yeah, like, absolutely. Is Rupert better? Does Rupert make Victor's team better if he swaps with Koulibaly? I think, I think I by think a lot. So. Oh, I think by a lot. I, I, I like Koulibaly's defense better right now. I, I think, I think Rupert would be having a field day in that league. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. I think Koulibaly at the NBL would be getting have a little bit of a tougher time. But maybe maybe it's just a wash. Who knows? I don't know. I just just flavor of the month for me. And I Rupert is just one of those guys I watch. I'm like I'm buying. I would be buying yeah. long term. I would be buying on this one because I I think. Worst case, Rupert looks to have the potential to be a bit of a dog on defense. And mm -hmm. now I think Koulibaly has those tools too, but um, it, it's interesting too, because if, if you love one of their defenses and you are you love the other ones, like well, what's really separating them? And I think Rupert's got a little bit more playmaking stuff that flashes to me. And I think that will come unlocked. I just think both of them have... Both of them will be really fun projects. The international class was getting a bad rep in the beginning of the year. I think it's getting a little bit of a steam right now, and you're seeing like there's talent here. Like, yeah, you could have, you know, four first rounders. Beginning of the year, I, I would, I would have assume said that. so. I would, I would assume they'll be four now. Um, beginning of the year, I would not have said that. No, and I think now there's a real shot to have four. Yeah. Um, so, what? Well, Let's pivot to his offense. The shot is what it is. Um, I thought there were some games where it looked a lot better than others. Uh, when you compare it to where it was this time last year, I think it's made a lot of strides. So I'm encouraged that eventually it will get to a respectable spot. Um, I actually liked a lot more of him on ball than off ball, which I wasn't expecting. I thought he was a really good passer. Um showed a little bit of creativity out of the pick and roll, some really good slashing stuff, but I don't think he's ever going to get that opportunity in the NBA. Um, you know, at least in the first, at least in his first contract. Um, my only real gripe with his offense um, other than the shot, but that is what it is right now. He really struggled to finish through contact. And he, at times it looked like he was scared to get fouled. Um, it was a lot of just making life way harder on himself by avoiding contact. And part of that is due to the frame. I'm sure. I think another part of that is due to the free throw numbers and with the shot being what it is and not wanting to, you know, just miss out on points that way. Um, so I, I think that's 
the interior scoring part of his game is what I'm what is what I'm surprisingly more worried about long term than anything else with this offense. Yeah, I think I think it's just the baby step he took this year um, was really encouraging. I think at the NBA level or NBL level, um, I, I'm like there right there with you. I think there's a lot of passing stuff that's really special. I think he's gonna get a little bit. I, I don't know if he's gonna as a rookie, but I think he'll get some on ball stuff because there is some creativity. There is mm-hmm. some some, and he might be off ball or maybe he's a sharing the court with a dominant point guard. You never know, but. He's got some creativity. He's got some wiggle. He's got that little extra gear to get downhill. I'm right there with you with the finishing because that's where he's going to have to live in the weight room a little bit. And maybe an NBA team's thinking like, hey, weight room first year, let's build his strength up. Let's get his core going. And then things are going to get easier because you put on weight with him and some strength, then a lot of his game is going to explode and blossom because it's going to make life easier for him dealing with guys all over him and NBL's a physical league. So he's been dealing with that all year. We've seen guys go there and deal with that. I just like the tools I've seen and, you know, even talking it out with you right now, I'm like, no, I need to go back and watch. Cause I really do buy it. And it's so tough with those raw prospects because you want to, with the hype. I mean, me and you watched him before the year at FIBA and we're like, gosh, defensively, yeah. he could be a freak of nature. And then you go see him in that league and you're like, okay, is it the league or is he just not what I was expecting? And then I just still am buying. Um, I don't know. It, it He's one of those names that it's going to be interesting where he goes because I could see him sneaking up into the late lottery and sub teams just all in. Um, mm-hmm. I can see him going in that 15 to 20 range very easily. Yeah. And I, so just for sake of clarity, I have him at 33 right now and it feels too low. It doesn't feel right, but then there are a couple guys that I I'll, I'll probably rethink and potentially move him over, but it's that tough range where a lot of those guys are really interchangeable and, that's like the bottom of that kind of last like first round tier for me, where it's like, I, it wouldn't surprise me at all if someone took him at 14 um, or he falls into the twenties and someone trades up for him. Cause they're like, what is happening? Like this is, we have a, a lottery grade on him. Let's go get him. Nothing will really surprise me with him on draft night. Uh, because if you're buying in, I get it. I definitely do. There's a lot to really get excited about. I'm just not quite there with them, but I completely agree with you as usual, Metcalf. That's, that's all I got. Unless you got something else. No, that that's all I got. Plug away. Um, I'm at no ceilings. Everyone go check out my latest basketball bandit segment. Um, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Had my first one, finally getting back into that. I'm going to have a couple other segments going out, but um, I'm going to try to get Metcalf on one of these with me to do a breakdowns, but I just did Case and Wallace's defense. Basketball bandits are going to be only defensive focus because I'm a maniac. Me and Metcalf love defense. So um, I just started to prep the Kobe Bufkin one. Got a lot of requests for Anthony Black next, so I think I'm going to do that one, and then I might be getting into some James Najee or maybe some Adem Bona. I need Bona to officially declare, and then there's going to be a <laughs> lot of – I mean, not declare, but stay in. Yeah. And then there's going to be a lot of Bona content. Um, so thanks, everyone. You can follow me on Twitter at Tyler underscore Rucker. Metcalf, as always, thank you, sir. Hit them straight this weekend on the golf course and go <laughs> south. All right. Well, once again, I'm Tyler Metcalf. You can follow me on Twitter at tmetcalf11. Uh, you can find all of our written work that is 100% free at noceilingsnba.com. Just click that subscribe button while you're there to make sure that you never miss anything that gets published. You can follow us across all socials at No Ceilings NBA and on YouTube at No Ceilings TV. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to subscribe, leave a review, and five-star rating. Until next time, see you.